A lot of quotables in there. Yeah, yeah. And that's just some of it. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking when I did it. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of quotes. There's a lot of T-shirts in there. Hundred like, percent. Like seriously, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know. Like I said, because I, I just did it, and I did it in. Normally, you tour material like a year and a half. Yeah. Two years, I toured that for like I worked on it for three months. I never really wrote anything down. I wrote it on a stage. Wow. You know, just talk about it and talk about the truth. Took me through the journey. Oh, that's true and comedy, by though, three man. Three months. Yeah. Like Ninety days. I had a dope. I had two hours on it, and I cut <laughs> it down to an hour. And then I filmed it August 7th. So from March, basically 27, 2022, approximately 1032 <laughs> <laughs> Pacific, that's when it, the idea hit me. Yeah. And so I guess that's April, wait, April, May, June, July, four months. Wow. It's a quick turnaround. Months, yeah, because August 7th was when I, I filmed it. Mm -hmm. So I could have had it out. I I could if I did it live I could just put it out sure. on August seventh but I had to cut it together and then we had to um, find a partner HBO Max who distributed it mm -hmm. who who already works with you and has already worked with yeah. you in the past right there's already a relationship by the way Marlon Wayans is back on the cruise show Real ninety two three mm -hmm. uh, God loves me is on HBO HBO Max uh, great special you, thank you you mm -hmm. took an extremely funny and and I I I think you set out to do something. Very special, and I think that's what you did. I think your family recognizes it as, as well, and I think that's very well, important to you. Notoriously hate everything I've <laughs> everything. ever done. <laughs> <laughs> it took me 50 years to finally get my brothers to go, I kind of like that one. <laughs> that was okay, ugly. <laughs> is there some truth to that? Huh? Is that fully true, or is it? You think I'm lying? <laughs> no, that's the truth. Sex Tuples was the first time, like, my brother's like, Keenan was like, mm, I really like that one. <laughs> Kim was like, that was a perfect movie. Because Kim's like my mom. Uh -huh. She would get on me. That was inappropriate. I, Naz, I like 84% I like of that movie, but you got to put your ass in. I'm tired of seeing your ass. I can't believe you stomp that stuffed animal. Like, she will get on me. And then it takes a while to tell the perfect joke yeah, sure. where everybody likes it. And mm -hmm. this special, I felt special because... Everybody that I know liked it. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. yeah. And God Loves Me is from the beginning all the way to the end, right? And it's the it's the Will Smith and Chris Rock situation, but it's your experience. It has nothing that. to do with them, right? Right. It really That's has nothing to do with them. The it's all special. about your your experience. Yeah, because a great special shouldn't be about a topic, right? Sure. It's not topical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A great special has to be about something your experience, that, right? Yeah, yeah. Having to do with you, mm -hmm. it has to be truthful. And there has to be some kind of pain and some kind of healing that you're healing from. It has to be deeper yeah. than, oh, let me talk about the slap. What was dope was no, no, the slap Marlon. was like this prism that created all these different worlds. That yeah. It made a Rubik's Cube because it was like, how do I feel about it? What was my experience with them? What's my experience with Jada, Will, and Chris? They're all my friends. What's the personal things that happened with me? And then let's talk about the slap. How do black people feel? How do white people feel? How mm. do we feel in Hollywood? It was a lot. And the funny thing is I didn't do it out of hate. I did it out of love. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I don't know. If no, you could they, see that. They you, see that. You can tell. You can tell. You know, you could tell. Well, I didn't get no text from Crystal Will. <laughs> so I guess it's either a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, right, I was just right, about right. to ask you how they never. Nah, and I, don't, I didn't feel no weird twitching, so Jada ain't putting no voodoo on me. <laughs> <laughs> But you were in love with Jada. No chicken blood in my house. <laughs> <laughs> you're, Everybody was in love with you're, Jada. You're Jada 19 like years old. Perfect. You're in love with Jada. Yeah, and then, my, you know, buddy. and Will Smith starts getting these roles. And you're competitive as a comedian and as an actor and as an yeah, artist. I compete with it. I was on WB, man. He was, he he was, was on NBC. NBC yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three letters in this act. NBC, come on. After Cosby. Like right. his mentor was Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby told him about points and Sure. You know, things like that about revenue streams and about being, you know, appropriate and, um, a black man and, and, and representing America and and having that responsibility. Yeah. And he had that mentor, and that's important. And he had Quincy Jones, you know, Thriller. And, you know, they had these people around him to teach him and, and, and Benny Richburg, teach him about success and success as a black man. And, and I guess we all 
have mentors. My mentor was different. I had John Witherspoon, and John was like the old <laughs> drunk uncle. Pops. Straight out of Detroit. Marlon, don't let the white man know you got money. <laughs> Hide it in your mattress, because they have this thing called tax. You don't want to pay that. <laughs> Marlon, invest in chicken. You buy one chicken a day, and you can make chicken soup. You can make chicken salad. You can make chicken uh, wings. You can... <laughs> but John, John, <laughs> John was a different type of uh, mentor, but he was a, a great mentor as, as well. Yeah, no, one of the jokes that stood out, man, was hilarious when you were like, now these Oscars are weapons, and you would have been like, yo, you getting your Oscar early, motherfucker. Because <laughs> I'm just thinking about, like, if that happened to me. I'm, yeah. This is what, like. Sean is ziplining in. Hilarious. I don't think the, the project nigga in me is gone, right? I'm born and raised in the projects of New York. My first instinct in defense is, oh, I got to hit you back. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is mm-hmm. a fight. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, like, I'm not going to literally sit there like, oh, that was cool. I don't have that appropriate black man in me. That's why I said Chris is so strong. I'm like, mm, I'm not going to react. Well, is he, <laughs> is he strong or is he a bitch-ass motherfucker? Though? <laughs> <laughs> Your Maybe words. Maybe he wanted to, and he's like, hey, that nigga's 6'4". Me... <laughs> he was logical. <laughs> he's think logical. Legs. That's right. No, but I, I really, you know, I really think, like, what would I have done? And then I got yeah, so man. many nephews and nieces and, like, my family and them. Isn't there 45 nieces and nephews? And, you know, yeah, man, I'm from, uh, I could, just for the projects, like, I could never walk down 16th Street and 9th Avenue ever again if that happened. Yeah. I'd have to take 15th Street and 10th Avenue, because all my boys be like, yo, shut up, you got slapped. That's all I would hear Mm -hmm. in my head. Shut up, you got slapped. And I, I think Chris did the right thing. Like I said, he's a better man than me. You yeah, know? A lot of us. Do, yeah. do you think you'll ever get to a point where the outside knows what it, wouldn't ever factor your decision? Like, you know, you're saying that you probably wouldn't do it. You would have reacted just so someone wouldn't think something of your you. Your instincts are your instincts. Yeah. 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 I've had people approach 100%. the stage, and my first instinct, I'm grabbing the mic stand, I'm going to bash them in the face. I don't know how to just go, hey, what are you doing? Where are you walking up? <laughs> right, yeah. you know, right, right, right. I'm, I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to hit him, and I'm going to run right there. Well, we're taught to protect him, ourselves. I'm going to jump down and kick him in their face. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. I'm thinking those things, defensive. I, I'm, I, I have to. Somebody approaching me, and that swagger, ooh, that, that look a little violent. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, you know, but I, I don't know. I, I, I will say I think Chris did the right thing. No, absolutely. I think at the end of the day, yeah. Did the Oscars do the right thing? I don't think so. But what are you gonna do? That's I don't think that's you them. Stayed the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable. But I think at that point, all those white folks were just scared. Right? <laughs> yeah, they were all scared. You know well, what I mean? Look at him. They didn't, so didn't want to be next. Scared. <laughs> like when he won his Oscar, they they didn't know what to do. Yeah. They got right. up out of fear and started clapping. They're like, well, I don't want him to slap us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, you know, a bunch of pussies. Like, yo, be like, nah, that wasn't cool. Somebody do something. Yeah, man. Yeah, you man. Know, walk out. You know. But you know, I, I think, I think he feels bad enough. I feel bad yeah. for for all of them. Yeah, you because say that. I feel bad as a friend. Mm-hmm. I feel bad as a comrade. I feel bad. As a black man, I feel I feel bad that it was done on that stage because I think the dopest thing they could do is come together and, and heal it for everybody. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. and, and it would take Chris to be the biggest, even bigger than he's been, to sit down, both of them, and just iron it out and and, and have that you know Martin Malcolm moment. Like think wow. I think. We all need that. I think the industry needs that. I think, you know, it deserves that at some point. You know, that's what I, I wish for. I don't know if it's going to happen because that should have never happened in the first place. Not over a joke. It, it, right. do you think it, was, that, it was a silly joke. Do you think that Chris might have just already kind of said his piece just because he already did his own special as well? Like oh, Chris said what he had to say. Yeah. So, like, do you Chris think there, there wow. is, like, there is that need to just talk to them? And got paid for it too. I mean, I just think they should sit down at some point. It was mm-hmm. wrong. It was wrong. You know, all a, a around. Comedian yeah. on a stage should be able to roast at the Oscars. That's mm-hmm. what the Oscars is. Yeah. It's a Thank toast you. and a roast. And we can't send messages that we as a society are that sensitive that we can't take a joke, and especially a light joke. If you know Chris, 
Nah, that was a light joke. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, he could have went harder, but he, you know, oh, yeah. it was very light. Yeah, and, and it was almost and, a transitional joke, yeah. maybe. It was just like, hey, Jada. It was. You know, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. They said it was like, hey, Jada. Yeah, Jane. Love you. Right, right, Yo, right. Marlon. I mean, like Hold on, really came quick. Up there and slapped on the back of the head with some cocoa butter. And was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Marlon Wayans is at Flappers um, tonight and on Friday as well. Uh, two shows, I believe, on Friday, right? Yeah. Um, at Flappers here in Burbank. Uh, also at the uh, Saboba, Saboba.com as well, uh, San Jacinto. Uh, that's on Saturday. That's on Saturday. Yes. So tomorrow I'm going to be at Flappers. One show. I like doing shows when I have one show. And it's, it's Flappers is a small intimate room. So I, I sure, just yeah. I kind of like get I like that I could just get to especially that Thursday night show and, and the Friday second show, the one yeah. I just added, because I can stretch. I like when I can stretch. I like when I can think. I like just being, like, the process of sitting in it. Because I, I literally, I write on a stage. I don't go home and I rarely do that. Like, yeah. No, you work it out. You work it out. in my phone. Sure. But I don't write down, this is exactly what I'm saying. I just kind of. I find it along the way, and I find that. You film yourself and watch game tape later? Is that what you're doing I as well? I always record it. The uh, sound, yep. but oh. I never listen to it. Hmm. I don't know why. I'm gonna start recording all my sets, but I don't want to encourage the audience to do it because then they're gonna get kicked out. So right. for me, I'm I'm gonna start doing that because I always come up with like different things, and sometimes I will forget. But when it's good, my mind just goes, "No, keep that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good." You know, when it's when it's trash, you throw it out, but. I just like being able to explore the comfort of writing on a stage. God Loves Me is on HBO Max. Chris Rock pretty much haunted you throughout your career, <laughs> right? I mean, he no, made he, you quit comedy for Chris, 20 years. Chris, Chris. And not he made you, but the way, with what he did, put you, you know, set you back a little bit. That but was, you thank him for that. That was Chris's love. Yeah. That was big brother love. That was, I and I, I never, like, it took me a minute to interpret it, you know, because I, I I assign and align it with how my brothers were to me. It's just that Chris wasn't my brother, you know what I mean? So it, it, it felt different. But I know that he mm. was just being Chris. He always hazed me, man. That's just Chris, man. That's If you know Chris, that's just, everybody that knows Chris, any young comic that knows Chris, that's his, that's Chris. That's he just, his way. Yeah. That's his we have, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I do it myself. But <laughs> when I'm sitting there talking shit about Leche and his... How he's a seven-year-old. Yeah, and his titties. You know what I mean? <laughs> his titties. I was saying to him, get down. I know, but I said to you, get in the gym. Uh, I was trying to make you better, and you got better. Now, I can sit here and go, hey... You got titties. <laughs> Leche gave you his Leche. <laughs> I need you now to get in the gym. Right, right, right. <laughs> but it's just a comedian's You're way stupid. of giving you love and advice. I, I mean, I remember when I first started It's a very doing rough movies. way of doing things. But it's but, just what we are. But I'm comedians not, are rough in that way. Of course, and you can't be a pussy. We're not you, really think, can, you, you think that no. comes from like growing up in broken homes in a way? Like you just understand this well, tough love. We all, most of us come from the hood. Most of most and from of pain and trauma. Yeah, yeah, damaged people, and we're finding our light. And so we go pick on somebody else, and then they <laughs> go pick on somebody else. And, and it's a beautiful damaging process <laughs> of growth. This thing called comedy by yeah. picking on other people. Yeah, man. Trauma, because, but it's it's right. beautiful. Yeah. It is entertain you with your pain. Trauma, yeah, and man. You, it makes you stronger. Yeah. So what Chris was trying. I remember when I first started doing movies. I remember I made my first big check, uh, Six Man, and then Senseless. And every time I saw Chris, <laughs> Mono Wayans, Senseless. And he'd talk about Mono Wayans, he's a damn fool. Mono Wayans, jackass. Mono Wayans, this is a dumb motherfucker. Every time I saw Chris, dumb he would tease me. And I couldn't say anything about him because he just kept rocking. And then one day, he did Pootie Tang. And that's when finally I go, hey, Chris Rock, put a tag. Put a tag on the tip tape. And I could mess with him back. But Chris wasn't trying to break me. Chris was trying to make me. And I, I know it was yeah. love. I, I love I love rock. And, um, you know, um, Mike, Mike Binder and a few of my older friends in comedy hit me when the special came out. And they all, they loved it because they said you could tell that I loved everybody involved and that it came from... A, a good place. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't do this to, 
like make fun. I want to make light. So that's why I did it. I think that's what you did, man. Seriously. God loves me on HBO Max. You're also in Air, Courting a Legend. Yes. Um, which is, you know, the movie about the Jordan sneaker. Yes. Legendary. You're a Jordan head. You get the I call have. from Ben Affleck. He calls you. Yeah, he called my phone. I was like, how'd you get my number? <laughs> I was like, J-Lo, give him my number out again? <laughs> <laughs> she ain't got my number. <laughs> but right away, it's a yes. I mean, yeah, whatever you guys are doing. He talked to me for 45 minutes. And he's just like, it's a great role. And, you know, I know it's a small part, but it's, it's impactful. And, you know, George Raveling, and he gave me the history of George Raveling. He was like, and, and it, I said, Ben, shut up. You had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> All you had to say was, hey, Marlon, Ben Affleck, I'm in. <laughs> ben I didn't Keith, watch ben you ben anything. I just wanted to you, you had know. me at Goodwill Hunting, my guy. You had, you've been at me. You <laughs> had his first movie. I'm there. <laughs> right. How right. many Orden, uh, Jordans do you own, would you say? I'd say about a thousand. Really? Yeah. Does each purchase heal your inner child? It does help. It, you know what? Honestly, I, I have them because I grew up so poor yeah. that to me, like, some buy, people buy watches, some people buy like jewelry, some people buy cars, some mm -hmm. people buy homes, some people buy, uh, I bought sneakers and clothes. That, because that I it. used to work at Barney's New York and they fired me. Wow. I used to work at the Athlete's Foot, I used to work at the US Athletics, I used to work at Foot Locker, and I used to always go in those stock rooms and go, man, I'm packing other people's shoes up and I've got this stock room all nice. And I used to be like, damn, one day I want to be able to walk into a store and buy whatever sneakers I want. Mm -hmm. I remember Belle Bib DeVoe and New Edition used to come down to the Athlete's Foot on 8th Street and 6th Avenue or Broadway, and they would just buy what they wanted. And I used to be like, damn. I want to get to that point in my life where I could just buy whatever sneakers I want. That's all I got. I don't own yeah. nothing else. This <laughs> ring fake. Stop it, dog. Stop it. This is an aura ring. You know what this aura ring does? It tells me what my heart heart rate is. It's like oh, a fancy really? Fitbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it tells me how I'm sleeping. It yeah. tells me that, yeah, but I don't I don't I don't have a bunch of like like chains or I don't nothing. I don't do that. I don't mm -hmm. if, if niggas rob me, they're going to be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like sneakers. All I got is sneakers. Man, sneakers. And they clunky, they heavy. I, I, you don't want sneakers. I, I don't have nothing. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't. Because for me, the value of my life is like the quality of like when I go on vacation. Mm -hmm. I'm able to eat a great dinner with my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll always be able to take care of people I love. You know yeah. what I mean? If somebody needs something, you know, to show up for people. That's, for me, a, a quality life. Yeah. My kids have a great education, and if they need something, you know, that I'm there and I'm able to provide it. I, otherwise, I don't, I don't, I'm a simple man. Just give me one of these John Denver jackets and John some Denver. Jordan and some talk. comfortable pants. <laughs> and I'm good. Right, I, right, I right. Big, I got big dick energy. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nah, you know, I, I see it on TikTok. Dick's got to have all that, yeah, I need a fast car to slap. Right, right, right. That's little dick energy. I got a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? You don't even know if it's on or Which off one? when you get out of the car. It doesn't matter. It's it does. Tesla. No, it does. It does. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you got the expensive one. That's why you're saying that, I motherfucker. I got the plaid. I got the plaid. <laughs> Uh -huh. It don't matter. I don't even know what it looks like. I don't I even like know what that looks like. I bought the plaid because the other one drives just as fast. It's just as <laughs> I just bought that because they had a, another seat. And I was like, oh, I could fit six niggas in here. So <laughs> <laughs> I see you and your kids on TikTok, man. You guys live a great life. Mm -hmm. And they're happy. They're and, happy. man, salute to you because you. a happy childhood is hard to come by. Yeah, I, I, I feel like the one thing I always wanted to do was offer my kids and my, my brother's kids. We all, all the, all the men in my family are good fathers. Mm -hmm. Like, we pride ourselves on that. If there's a baby... We, we taking care of it. And if not, it's because the baby don't want to be taken care of. <laughs> right. But for the most part, because sure. kids do that. Like, I, ain't, I ain't fucking with my father. What you mean? You ain't fucking with me. <laughs> um, so, you know, my, because my father was such a good father. You mm -hmm. know, he tried. He was He's there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, as much as he could, he was a provider. And my mother, as a mother, always told us how my father, where he lacked. Oh, and there was a lot. And she would tell me where he lacked. And all m and put it in her boys, and we always made up for it. You know what I mean? My dad sure. never had money, so we always worked to be better providers than yeah. my father. We had to guess when dinner was. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. We spin the wheel, nigga. We, ho we hope. 
I hope this nigga come home with this money. Because some nights we be waiting a long time. 9.30, kick around. It's like, right, ah, right. I guess we having rice again. <laughs> oh, my Rice, God. only rice. I remember telling my mom I was hungry, and she said, me too. I, I, I was one of the worst days of my life. I was like six. It was terrible. Yo, I found this meme, right? And, of course, numbers are, it's the internet, so numbers could be off Air, here. It's in theaters April 5th. And then it's on Prime a really on great May. movie. Or in May. Yeah, in May. But go see it in theaters. It's a great movie to go check out in theaters. Absolutely. Um, great cast. Um, such a good movie. So proud to be in it. Um, and I, I love I love my small part. My I was once told there's no such thing as small r- roles, only small actors. And so every role I always go into, I always try and be a giant no matter how small the role is. And uh, sure. this was an awesome. impactful role, and I'm glad I did it. Nah, Marlon, listen, man. If Tunnel Vision was a person, my G, that's you. Thank you. I see it. So, again, these numbers could be off. It is how the about Internet. This? But listen, I'm doing listen. this on a cellular level. Uh, <laughs> No, right now, like, I'm on a fruit cleanse. That's why I'm walking around with bags baggies of fruit. Of fruit. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm eating nothing but fruit. I'm, I'm changing my, 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 I, I drink nothing but water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a bunch of herbs every day and a couple of, um, of, of, of uh, vitamins. Sure. And I pee all day long. I eat fruit all day. And at night, I have a salad. I'm doing this for 90 days because wow. I'm spiritually days. trying to zone out and go to n- the next level of my life. And I feel God lifting me. And I just want to, on a molecular level, finally get to that place I've always dreamed of being. Because I've been a star a long time. I want to be a superstar. I want to I, I be that you dude. You deserve it, man. Because I could do the drama. I could do the comedy. I could do the romance. I can do the action. I could do it all. So And I could do the comedy. So And I could do the story. So I'm, I'm, I'm at this place now where it's just like, these are my best years. Yeah. Hmm. Listen to this. Keenan Wayans, or uh, yeah, Keenan Wayans. Uh, Look at your internet live. 61. What kind of internet live? You listen, listen. 61, $65 million. Damn. Damon Wayans. I got to rob some niggas. $35 million. Marlon Wayans, 47. No way. Damon Greedy. 50 now. Uh, $40 million. Sean Wayans, 48 years old, $30 million. Not, a, not enough is said about this fantastic family. Yeah, but all them numbers is live. Is <laughs> Those are lies. Cause I, was, I think I got to rob some family money. <laughs> <laughs> How Keenan got that much money over Damon? Damon, first of all, Damon definitely got more money than Keenan because Damon. No way. Damon's selfish. Damon been rolling solo. <laughs> uh, Me, Sean, and Keenan, we've been a band. <laughs> we've been the Jacksons. Damon been Michael. I'm sick. So don't. Damon been Rob Michael. me, y'all. Rob Damon. No, <laughs> uh, no we, we, but with that being said, an amazing it's, family, it's, talented I, I family. I will say this. It's not about the money. Those numbers are definitely not right. Um, but I will say that um, if you look at our family, I want the people to look at our family the way we looked at the Jacksons. Sure. The way we looked at the, the Barges. The way we looked at the Silvers is that, you know, especially the Jacksons, even the Osmonds, yes, they're white, but still as a family, <laughs> they did some dope things. And I think for us, they gave us a way out. They taught us that we can dream and work together because we love each other. My family loves each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so to be able to, like, when we just see the Jacksons and they was on their, they had a variety show and we'd see them together, we'd be like, man, that family loves each other and they're having fun and they're dancing and they're doing all that. Mm-hmm. And look at Michael. He's protected and he's loved and he's so good. But it was the love that that family had and that they were a family. Never mind all the other nonsense, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, Joe did this. And never mind how everybody tries to tear you down. I'm going to say that it was the glow of that family that made my family dream together. And all of us will always love what the Jacksons meant for us. It's not about the money. It's what they meant to black families and what we could achieve and what we could be. So kudos to all those great, big, beautiful black families, especially the Jacksons, the DeBarge family, the Silvers family. Um, uh, the Leche family. The Teta family. The Teta family. No, but those families taught us a dream, and so it's not yeah, about sure. the money. I hope that we, there's kids at home that go, I want to be like, and I hear this. My, my, I hear a woman, you know, tell us about her kids and how this one wants to, they watch the Wayne's Brothers and he's Marlon and he's Sean and you see their chemistry and it's cute mm-hmm. because yeah. you can see the older brother slapping the little brother upside his head and, but you see that they, they just want to tell jokes and they just want to make each other laugh yep. and that there's something infectious about what we did. That's awesome. And it stuck. 
Yeah, it's like you and Leche. I didn't know y'all were brothers. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> He's stupid. That's my guy, though, man. He's we like believe in Leche. And so do you, I man. Like him better now. And you gave him some advice, and it honestly changed. He lost weight. I he, seen him eating vegetables. Nah, but like that, and now like I can tell you're pooing because you didn't look like you pooing. <laughs> oh no, nah. I didn't look like your body was like. They, mm, I'm nah, holding nah, my nah, 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 nah. Hey, logs. There, there's one of our interviews that 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 we that <laughs> we go back to where you really inspired him, dog. So Good. we appreciate that. Good. Thank I you, see, man. I see the difference, and I I, I always always tell him. And I told you to do stand up, but you don't want. Do you want to do stand up again? No. He's gonna be a flapper. No. Yes. Yes. No. I'm last time. I'm gonna do well. I'm gonna die up there. Yes. But I, that's what it takes, right? But it's fun for me. Yeah, absolutely. I <laughs> but know. You I know. Do it. <laughs> no. Thursday. Thursday. You want to do it again? No, absolutely not. No. Come on down. I have no flappers. reason to do it. Watch this man bomb. He is really high. <laughs> <laughs> right. He sweat. It <laughs> made me so happy. Oh man. I, I, oh, it was tragic. It smelled like taquitos on that <laughs> stage. <so> stupid. <laughs> Chill Achilles on that stage. Shout out to Fluffy, who bailed me out. He did, but even he couldn't bail you out. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Marlon Wayne's uh, at Flappers tonight, and uh, two shows on Friday as well, and at the uh, Saboba, Saboba.com, uh, San Jacinto. Make sure you get tickets. Marlon Wayne's, congratulations on air as well. God Thank Loves you, Me, HBO Max. Thank Come you. see us anytime. You know it. Thank you, my boy. We're doing great things. Let's go get it. Yes, sir. One day to Crypto Center. Let's get it. Come on. Too easy. Crew Show, Real 92.3. Yo, check out more of our YouTube interviews now. ASAP Plus. Download the free iHeartRadio app so you can check out the Crew Show podcast.